Hey, what's going on? Jay Lestexi here. This week we're looking at probability. Uh, this is a really powerful technique that uh, you probably be familiar with. In case you're not, we're going to take it from the very simplest implementation of probability in our sequencer. Uh, you, can, you could use it in so many different ways. With this particular tube, we're just going to show you uh, just how simple it is to, to implement in its basic form. And then we'll end up returning to it again and again in, in different ways uh, that you can, you can introduce it into your sequences and in other places. Even just last week, Magnoise put up a video on their channel um, with people requesting probability in the Rene uh, and put up a video on how to do that in uh, using analog patching with patch cables. And if you watch that video, which I put in the, in the description, um, you'll see that it's kind of a little bit tricky to do uh, in the analog world. In the digital world, it's so simple. So it makes a lot of sense to cover this uh, in, in our EasyGen series. Let's, um, let's just jump into it. So over here, we've got a demonstration patcher and you'll see what we've got the, the similar kind of step viewing that we've been using in live.scope. And in our really simple implementation where we just, we just kind of want one knob, one dial to be able to control the likelihood of an event occurring for each step. So in this instance, we've got one, one knob that just is uh, checking the next step. And if it's above a threshold, then it will occur. So what we'd like is if this knob is at zero, the next event does not occur. And if it's at a hundred, every single step will occur, right? So we can have a look at this. This probability is, is set to zero at the moment. And if I raise it up, you'll see that these gates, these red gates, uh, occasionally occurring. And if we bring it all the way to 100%, that gate is left high. All right, so let's have a listen to this as well. Um, I've got this big, uh, this this beep module um, gigaverb, uh, it's just, just for simplicity. And we're still using playlist tilde. Uh, eventually we'll move away from playlist tilde, but I actually have a, quite a fondness for how, how simple and effective it is. Let's, let's have a listen to this. So we're just using playlist tilde uh, with some some chopped chromatic samples from Freesound. Uh, this is a public domain sample, uh, and I'll put the link in the description if you want to download it and chop it up yourself. And we're essentially kind of using playlist tilde like a quantizer here. Um, just chop the intervals from the, the harmonic minor scale uh, in C, and just using eight of those here. And so when we step through these indices, uh, we're playing just this randomized um, order. So this sequence, you can hear, it's just one bar sequence that's just repeating over and over again. But if we use probability, we can extend the, the musicality of that phrase, like we can get more out of it. Because every time it repeats, uh, it'll, it'll select a different step, because it's a stochastic process, right? It's like randomized. So let's have a listen to how that sounds when we, when we take the probability down from 100. <laughs> And when we use probability like this, uh, it, it's good to hear it in relation to some, some other kind of sound or some other sequence. So I'll play some drums. So you can hear that if we've got a fixed sequence that's just repeating, our probabilistic sequence that's playing off it sounds a bit more lively. Feels like we're, we can kind of extend this phrase well beyond one bar, right? And all that's going on there is just, uh, it's really just the probability that's allowing that to, to give it more, uh, more capacity. And it's it's also performative. You can you can use this gesturally. So let's uh, let's put it into place. I'll show you how quick and easy it is to to make in Gen, and then we can kind of use it again. 
So the first thing we'll need to do is to uh, re-implement our step sequencer. You can either copy in the one that you've used before, uh, or you can you can remake it from scratch. So we're just prepending the param name here uh, because just to save room, I'm going to hide these away in a sub patcher. So the next thing we want to do is to be able to have this uh, this gate mechanism, this probability gate. Let's make a, a little abstraction that you can reuse for this. Cool. So we've got our gen sub patcher here. We've got an inlet and an outlet. And what we'd like is we'd like to be able to pass in the step and then have a random process determine whether the current step is allowed through. So whenever we're dealing with random processes, we can use the white noise or the noise operator, which uh, generates white noise. And there's many different ways to deal with uh, random number generation. So don't feel like this is the only method. In fact, we'll, we'll return to this and I'll show you other methods that you can use. But at the moment, white noise is going to be the way to do it. And because the, the noise operator generates samples between negative one and one, we need to use the abs operator to just make sure that we have always got samples between zero and one. And because this is a gate, you can probably imagine that we need a gate operator. So we're going to have an event coming in here and we need something to happen here in order to let gate uh, open or not. Now the noise operator is generating new samples every sample so depending on what your sample rate is uh that's the several that's tens of thousand times a second and we don't need it to work that hard right well the the value that we're going to use to open this gate uh we need to slow that down so the sample and hold operator is going to help us here it's going to let us control when we sample this noise value and like when we use it so we're using a threshold value of 0 0.5 for our sample and hold. So whenever the, uh, the, the control signal goes in above that value, we'll sample and then hold that value. So we're using the change operator here to indicate whether the next, uh, it's time for the next step. And what comes out of the change operator is either a zero, a negative one, or one. So we use abs to make sure that we only ever have one or a zero. So if the if a change has occurred, we'll get a one and that will uh, pass through into our sample and hold operator, which will pass the next noise sample through and hold it. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to have some agency over this. So we'll make a param for the threshold. So we just simply need a less than or equals to operator. And then we can use the symbol that refers to this param inside the operator. And that's it. That's really all there is to it. Uh, it's just a conditional operation and we're just passing through noise. You, you can see that I've created a couple of outlets and this is uh, for a couple of different reasons. So just take note of the comments that I'm using here. Uh, it's good to label your abstractions. So in order to use this, uh, let's make a couple of outlets and have a look at what's going on. There's one thing that we haven't had an opportunity to talk about yet, and that is how do you deal with params when they're inside sub patches in gen? And there is an operator specifically for this. It's called set param. So our param that's inside our sub patcher is called threshold. So we just need to pass that as the argument. And then we make another param. So if you're using live.dial for this, you want to have uh, this percentage, this unit style as percent, and you want it to be zero to 100. Uh, you can either change the param inside your gen um, patch up, or you could use the right hand outlet. So if we swap the outlets, you'll see that uh, it always goes from zero to one, and it doesn't matter what unit style you're using. 
let's just have a look at these the second and third outlets that are coming out of our probability gate to begin with. So I like to use the line width uh, attribute here for my gates. I think uh, making gates slightly thicker. When you, in a minute, we're going to overlay many of these live dot scopes over the top of each other, and it just makes life simpler. All right, so you can see here that we've got all three elements of our uh, probability sub patcher coming out here. We've got the threshold value coming out in white. We've got the blue values, which are the noise values that are being sampled here out of our sample and hold. And if that noise value is uh, below the threshold, the gate goes high. And if the value is above the threshold, the gate goes low. So it's nice to have these three views overlaid over the top of each other. So you can just easily see what's going on by just controlling our probability like this. We can, we can see exactly the distribution of events. So if you think about it, we don't really need to see the sampled noise value. I mean, in your patcher, if you want to, if you want to keep it and be able to look at it, uh, keep that in and figure out how you're going to stick that in and make, make sense of it. Uh, we're going to get rid of these, this threshold value and the noise value, uh, because we only really care about the gate. So now that we've only got the gate output from our probability gate sub patcher, we can overlay this over the top of our steps. And now we've got a, a simple view that shows us which step we're holding open. So if I drop the probability right down, it makes it a lot easier to be able to see which step is being selected by the, the random number generator. And the other good thing about this is that we could reuse this, uh, this this probability gate. It's not just for UI. We could use it for the envelope for this particular step. So what we've got here is we've got a modulo one operator that's coming out of our uh, secret steps. And this is something we've used before. But this gives us a ramp uh, between zero to one, like a, like a little phaser ramp for each step. So the way that we can use this with our probability gate is that we simply multiply the gate by this phaser ramp and we get phaser ramps only for the steps that are being held open for the probability gate. And so you could treat this like you would with any other kind of phaser ramp. Uh, one thing that's really useful is that perhaps like a, a really simple envelope you can make is we can use the triangle operator. And because we've got a phaser ramp, we can kind of run through this wavetable uh, using this ramp. So you can see here we've got a really simple AD envelope for each of our probability steps. Uh, and this is also for when You'll notice that the probability gate, sometimes it gets hold, held open for multiple steps in a row. You know, like if we're flipping a, a coin, um, sometimes we'll get heads a couple of times in a row. Same, same with probability. So what's useful about this is that we actually, for each of the discrete steps, we do get a new, uh, a new envelope. And the good thing about the triangle operator here is that we've got this other inlet here for the duty cycle. So we can make a param and control our AD slope like we would for an AD uh, envelope. So now we've got this param. We just need it out here. So you can see here that we've got our AD envelope, but we can control the shape. So if we want something that's uh, got no attack, uh, we can bend it to the left. And if we want a slow attack, we can bend it to the right. So uh, in order to control playlist tiller, we just need the index. So just notice that this was connected incorrectly. Uh, you actually want the step index from ceiling to be passed into your probability gate in, in this particular case. I'll show you why. So we've got a zero here for the uh, for every every time that our gate is low, well we get a zero value, and then when the gate is high, we actually get the step corresponding. So this is what we can send into our playlist tilde object.
And just remembering that we don't ever want to connect from the bottom of a number tilde object. Uh, always connect from the same source. So now we're triggering our playlist tilde objects in accordance with the step that is uh, being, being triggered when the gate's high. We want to be able to use this envelope that we've just created here, this AD envelope. So we'll need to send that over as well. So this is pretty messy over here. Uh, I don't like that, but just in the interest of time, what we've got here is uh, this orange live dot scope is just the audio output from these two playlist tilders. And we've got another live dot scope over the top in blue that is showing us our envelope shape. So it's nice to be able to see the envelope overlaid over the audio itself when we're modulating that shape. And this is basically our probability uh, mechanism. So we can use this in so many different ways in our, in our sequencer and other places in our gen patching. So I'd encourage you to think about other ways that you might use this, especially uh, on top of the stuff that we used before, like the polymetric sequencer, being able to control the probabilistic output of some of those polymetric steps will e extend those phase cycles even further. And there's a, there's a whole other world of places that you can introduce probability into your uh, into your patching. All right, so I hope you've hope you've enjoyed that. We'll uh, see you next time.